Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to do a detailed review on this Braun Pure Flavor 14 Cup Coffee Maker, model number KF5650. This is Braun's latest coffee maker. It's a 14 cup. Most coffee makers are 12 cup. So it's got a pretty nice carafe. Again, 14 cups. It's got a nice handle, hinged lid. This does have a warming plate. It's got a very nice display. It's touchscreen, except for this is like a this is like a standard button, but it's got a very nice display. So looking around the side, it's got a window that points towards the front to show you how much water you've got installed. We got we can lift this lid. It's got a little handle here. There's our brew head. It comes with a reusable cone filter number four, but this is a little bit bigger because this is a 14 cup coffee maker. So you can use paper filters in here, but if you use the, the 12 cup paper filters, it may overflow. You gotta use 14 cup filters. It's got a pretty, there's the cone shaped filter basket. There's the mechanism for the pause brew. Everything fits pretty good. Back here's where you pour the water and it does come with a carbon filter. It's got this little um, lever here. You can change the month of whatever, whenever you've installed your carbon filter. Your carbon filter should be replaced every two months. So it's got a pretty nice finish to it. The clock goes to a dim mode after 10 seconds if you haven't touched anything. So when you turn it on, if you don't touch anything after 10 seconds, it goes to a dim mode. Then it goes to a standard black finish. A little bit of cord storage and it's a two prong cord. This is a tall coffee maker, so it will not fit under a kitchen cabinets, which are 19 inches. It's about 22 and a half inches tall. And it does snap. So Braun coffee makers tend to have a little bit more going on. They can be a little more complicated with the controls. This one doesn't seem too bad. You've got three brews. You've got fast, regular, and bold. And you got a fourth brew over ice. It is programmable. So you can wake up to the morning in the morning with a fresh pot of coffee. It's got a clean light. Um, this also sets the hard water uh, softness level. You've got to set up the machine to tell it uh, how hard your water is, either soft, hard, soft, medium, or hard. You can change the temperature of the warming plate. It's got low, medium, and high with this button. And again, we can set the clock. And also the warming plate will stay on from, you can change it from zero to four hours. The default is two hours. So the warming plate will shut off after two hours. If you don't do anything, that's the default setting, but you can have it last up to four hours and then the, and then the coffee maker will automatically shut off. This does have beeps when it's done brewing and when you press certain buttons, but you can turn the beeps off. I'm going to show you how to do that too. And also when this clean light comes on, that lets you know that it's time to descale. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to descale this with vinegar. It does come with a little scoop, but if you lose the scoop, that's just one tablespoon. So again, here's the cone filters, but these are for eight to 12 cups. So you've gotta read these close. Um, again, this is a 14 cup coffee maker, so you would have to buy 14 cup if you wanna use paper filters. Paper filters help reduce sediment but you can use the supplied reusable filter that comes with it, but you may get a little bit of sediment in your coffee. That's the, just the really, really fine stuff that settles at the bottom of your coffee cup or the coffee pot. So it takes just standard drip coffee maker, coffee ground at a medium grind. We'll brew some Folgers Classic Roast today. So you're just gonna get your scoop. So it's one scoop per cup you're gonna brew. So, I can brew up to 14 cups, or I can brew six cups, I can brew four cups, I can brew 10 cups. But it's gonna, whatever amount of water I put back here, each time I press the brew button, it's gonna brew whatever water I put back in here. So that you always start out with a, an empty reservoir. So if I wanna do 14 cups, I gotta fill it to the 14 mark, I gotta put 14 tablespoons here, and then press a brew. If I wanna just do six cups, I fill it up to the six cup mark and I put six tablespoons here and press the brew. It'll, then that way it brews just six cups. So we're gonna do the full 14 cups. Again, you just put your coffee right there. Okay, so I've got 14 tablespoons in the filter basket, in the filter. Now we're gonna fill the carafe up to the 14 mark and then dump it in the back. Okay, I've got it filled up to the 14 mark. Now this is pretty heavy. 
this is a little bit bigger than a standard coffee uh, carafe with 12 cups, so be careful. It does pour nice. You've got a nice big opening. It pours really nice, actually. Make sure you put the, the craft back with the lid on because that's what uh, activates that little plunger so that the coffee can come out. So we put that back in. We've got our water in. I'm just a little bit below the max mark, but that's okay. I'm gonna close this. It kind of it does kind of snap. I gotta come up here, I gotta turn the power button on. I'm gonna do a regular brew. So I just pressed that, that's like a touch screen that turned green. I did hear a little beep, it was very quiet, but I can turn those beeps off and I'll show you how to do that later. The um, warming plate is set to medium, that's what that medium stands for. Okay, so after about 20 seconds, it starts brewing coffee. So on this regular brew, it, it sort of sounded like it paused a little bit. Yeah, so it pauses just a little bit. It brewed some hot water and then kind of paused and now it's starting to brew again. So it paused maybe 10 seconds. That has to do with letting the coffee bloom. I don't know a, a bunch about that, but that pausing after it puts a little bit of hot water on it and pausing, that's a pretty nice coffee maker that does that. So it seems to be pausing again, just ever so slightly pausing a little bit. It brewed for about a minute and then it just paused for maybe five seconds that time. That, didn't, that seemed really short when it paused. So let's check some temperature coming out the bottom. So the temperature coming out of the bottom is about 180. I'll try to catch the water at the top. I see 186. So again, it paused just a little bit again. So I see about 190. When the water hits that probe just right, I see it there. So this has been pretty consistent. It, I'm on a regular brew and it's kind of brewing for a little bit and it just pauses just ever so slightly. It kind of gets quiet and then it starts back up again. So as we go along, the temperature coming out the bottom increases. I saw about 186 now. So it's a relatively quiet coffee maker up to this point. Towards the end, it does get a little bit louder and you get a little more steam coming out around it. So it does have pause brewing, so I can take this out. I can pour me a quick cup of coffee. That plunger stops and doesn't let the coffee come out, but I gotta make sure and put this back pretty quick so that it can continue to brew. Otherwise, it will overflow if you leave the coffee pot out. So we're about at the six cup mark. Let's just take a sneak peek. Yeah, there's how it's doing. So even though it's pausing a little bit, it's still, we're at the six cup mark. It's been six minutes. That's a, that's pretty standard for a coffee maker. For a coffee maker to brew one cup every minute, that's about the standard. I'm sure if we selected the fast brew, it definitely would brew faster. Okay, so we're about to the 10 cup mark. 187 coming out the bottom still. Let's take a look, see how it's doing. Okay, it's doing pretty good. So we're getting towards the end of the brew. It does get a little bit louder. You can hear quite a bit more steam and it does kind of pop a little bit. That's pretty standard for brawn coffee makers. They got kind of like that popping. And you do get, this does get hot up here, so be careful, but you do get quite a bit of steam coming out around it. And especially around the back. So that took right about the 14 minute mark. We're completely done with the 14 cups. So it hasn't beeped at me yet. Okay, there it just beeped. So three small beeps. Again, we can turn those beeps off. That's really nice. So let's see how the craft pours again. Be careful. You may not be used to 14 cups. That's pretty heavy. It does pour pretty nice though. Again, the warming plate's gonna keep the coffee warm. Let's come up here. Let's see how hot that cup of coffee is. Yeah, that's a really hot cup of coffee. 175, yeah, that's really hot. So this tastes, I've tasted this earlier, it tastes like a really good cup of coffee. Braun coffee makers make good coffee. It's nice and strong. Um, it's got a good flavor, good taste to it. 
So now the coffee maker will stay on to keep that warming plate on. Let's see how hot that warming plate is. About 250, 300, 286. All right, let's go up here again. Be careful, this can be hot. You're gonna lift the lid, get some steam. There's how the coffee grounds did. Cleanup is very simple. You may want to let it cool down, but you, it's got this handle. Very nice handle. It's not going to drip on you. You can take this over, but if you're using the reusable filter, you've got to uh, lift this out like that. Now, it doesn't look like it got very high. You might be able to use the 8 to 12 cup paper filters, but it may overflow them. I'm just not sure. So if you don't want to wait for it to automatically shut off, just come up here and hit the power button. That will turn the warming plate off and turn the coffee maker off. So I do like bronze. Cleanup is very simple. All of these parts are dishwasher safe. You can remove this. This lid comes off and you can put all of this in the dishwasher. I just rinse this filter basket out and then about every third or fourth brew is when I put it in the dishwasher. You do have quite a few coffee grounds on here. Um, so I would definitely not put this in the dishwasher unless I rinsed it out. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features. Let's show you how to set the clock. So first you gotta turn the unit on. You gotta hold this clock button. Hold it, and then that first digit will start flashing. Now I use the set button to change the time. It does have AM and PM, that's nice. Hit the clock button again, then I can do the minutes. And when I get the time set, just hit the clock one more time. It stops flashing and it memorizes it. So let's talk about water softness. So if your water is really hard, say like around your shower head, you get a lot of white calcium buildup, then you're going to want to tell the unit that it has hard water. The default is set to H3, which is hard water. So you're going to hold this clean button until the display changes. H3. Now you're going to use the set button to change. H1 is so uh, soft water. H2 is normal water. H3 is hard water. Whenever, whichever one you've got set, then hit the clean button again, and then it memorizes that setting. So this temp button is for the carafe. We got to hold the button and then hit the set button. Okay, so this is a little tricky. You got to hold it till the number till it starts flashing, and then you can hit the set button. And you've got low, medium, and high. That's the carafe temperature. How hot is it going to keep the coffee in the coffee pot? The default is medium. Then, once it, then hit the temperature again and it'll stop flashing. Okay, so let's say you want to turn the beeps off. Hold this, all you got to do is turn the coffee maker on. Don't, don't start a brew, and you can't do this during a brew, but hold the set button. And you're going to see a little uh, bell with, a lot, with an X come up right there underneath the PM. There's a little speaker with an X. That means the beeps are off. Hold the set button again for about four or five seconds, and it'll, that means the beeps are on. Very simple. If you see this clean light come on, that means it's time to descale. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to descale that. This has a descaling mode that you've gotta put the coffee maker in. Okay, we can change the auto off time. That's how long it keeps the warming plate on down there. We gotta press and hold, the, so turn the coffee maker on, press and hold the clock and the set button at the same time. It's a little tricky, but you gotta press those at the exact same time. Auto off is displayed and it starts flashing. Like I said, default is two hours. So now you just hit the set button. It's gonna change it in 15 minute increments. I can go all the way up to four hours. That's the auto off or zero, zero. That means it shuts the warming plate off. As soon as it's done making coffee, it shuts it off. So I can go anywhere in between zero to four hours in 15 minute increments. And then just let it, it's going to sit there and flash and let it sit there and flash and it'll memorize it. Or you can hit the clock button and it'll go back to the clock and memorize it. So I'm gonna, okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set the auto brew. So if you want to wake up in the, in the morning to a fresh pot of coffee, we're going to hit this auto brew. Then you got to hit the set button one time. Be careful. Now the hours start flashing. Now hit the set button to change the hours. This is the time it's going to start. I want this thing to start at 4 a.m. in the morning or 4, 4, hit the clock button to change over to minutes. 
So let's do 430. Hit the clock button one more time. That's the time it's going to start. Now pick what brew you want. Do you want a fast, regular, or bold? I want a regular brew. Once you select regular blue, uh, brew, let it time out. It'll just stop flashing. And the auto on is now displayed. So when you go to bed, you're not going to see this light. This light turns off. And you can even turn the coffee maker off. But the auto on is, is lit. That means the coffee maker will start. So everything can be kind of look like it's not going to, it's on. But as long as that auto on it is, is lit, that means the coffee maker will start at that, at that appropriate time. Make sure you got your filter in. Your craft is empty, your water's in, and your coffee uh, grounds. Okay, so now let's brew it over ice. So this thing acts a little different for over ice. So it's got this little snowflake here. We're gonna fill it up to the, to the snowflake with water. And it's got that same, um, it says max ice cubes right there, but it doesn't have the snowflake on here, but it looks like it's, of seven cups, it's at the seven cup mark. So we wanna fill this up to the seven mark, not to the, that mark. So you're gonna fill it up to that ice, that the snowflake mark. And stop. Now we've gotta add our coffee grounds. I've got the filter in. It says to add, so even though we're only brewing seven cups of water, it wants 14 tablespoons of coffee grounds. So it's gonna be a very strong coffee, but the, when the ice melts, that's gonna help dilute it. So we're gonna put 14 uh, tablespoons. Okay, I've got my coffee grounds in, my water's in to the iced. Let's close the lid. You're gonna turn the coffee maker on. My auto on is on, sorry, I turned it off. So you're gonna hit the over ice button. Now this does not start the brew. You still have to select fast, regular, or bold. They recommend doing bold. So when you do over ice to do a bold, I mean, you can do a fast or a regular. So I'm going to do a bold. Once I press the bold button, now it's going to do over ice. So something happened there. You want to make sure that over ice light is lit. So I'm not sure what happened. I, so I turned it off, turn it back on, hit the over ice button. And when you hit the bold button, the bold and the over ice. So whatever brew you select, both of those should be lit. I must have waited too long because when I pressed the bold, just the bold was lit. So make sure both of those are lit to do over ice. So it brewed for just a second, for about 10, 20 seconds, and now it paused. So it acts like it's done brewing, but it's just pausing for a second. And then, and then it's going to start back up. Now, it says not to put the ice, it says to brew the over ice first, then add your ice cubes. Some, you know, some coffee makers, like the Ninjas, you actually put the ice cubes in and then you brew the over ice coffee into the ice cubes, but they don't want you to do that here. But I don't know why they would give you the mark because after you brew, you're not gonna be able to put ice in up to that mark. But the instructions say don't put the ice cubes in. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna put the ice in and then do the brew into the ice. Cause that's, you know, why would they give you a mark on the side if they don't want you to do it that way? Again, I just filled it up to the ice mark where it says there's a mark on that says max ice cubes. And now I'm brewing the coffee right into the ice cubes. Let's see if it brews it any different. That's still 186. So the temperature going through the coffee is still the same. Let's check the water up here. Yeah, I'm still seeing about 190 up here, 185. So interesting, it still turns the warming plate on. So the warming plate is still really hot. I was hoping when you do an over ice, it would turn the warming plate off because that's really gonna melt that ice. Okay, so that took about eight or nine minutes to brew that over ice, but man, is it really melting the ice in there. Okay, so it just beeped at me. You know, it was done brewing. It took about two minutes for it to beep at me, but it, so when you do over ice, it does shut the coffee maker off. It does shut the warming plate off. That is a nice feature, but the warming plate was on during the brew. And as you can see, that is pretty melted. So as it stands right now, you know, that coffee is around 50 degrees. 
it says to add more ice all the way up to the 14 cup mark. Then it says to stir it in to kind of get everything nice and cool. Okay, so after stirring that, you know, I would like to see it, it's still a 40, I would like to see it around 36, 37. It's starting to get there, it's getting pretty close. So I've got a tumbler here with the ice, so I'm gonna try this iced coffee. I usually go about there. I love to add me some milk for my iced coffee. And I also like to add a little sugar-free French vanilla. Give me a iced vanilla coffee. Just two dabs. Okay, so I stir that up and I'll give it a taste. Okay, so it's, it's an iced coffee. Um, Folgers isn't my best for iced coffee. I like more of a smoother coffee for iced coffee, like a Dunkin' Donuts medium roast, but it's cold enough because I added some ice in the tumbler. It's strong enough. So yeah, I think it can make an iced coffee. That's, that's a lot of iced coffee to make. I mean, you could have everything probably. You could probably, um, instead of adding seven cups, add, you know, four cups of water and then half the amount of coffee grounds. So you might be able to just half everything to get not as much. This does end up being pretty cold. So after you, after it has sat here for just a minute, Yeah, we're still hovering around that 40 degree mark. But after you add some ice into there, it's still strong enough and it still does taste pretty good. So I didn't expect it to taste as good as it did, um, but it's definitely cold and it definitely can make an iced coffee. So this coffee maker looks really nice. Again, there's it brewed the over iced coffee grounds. It's simple to clean up. Everything's dishwasher safe. This one's got some nice features, you know, being able to turn the beeps off, changing the craft temperature, three brews plus over ice. Um, that's, but it is 14 cup. Now you don't always have to brew 14 cup. It's just, it makes everything a little bit bigger when it's 14 cup. But this has a lot of features that Cuisinart has on their uh, coffee makers. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll put a link to these tumblers in the show description notes, a link to that. I'll put a link to this. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate. If you do click on the links, the products don't cost you anymore, but I do get a little bit of money from when you click on those links. So thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.